You talking to the Rolex wearing, diamond ring wearing, kiss stealing, woo, wheel of dealing, limousine riding, jet flying, son of a gun, and I'm having a hard time holding these alligators down. You are watching the leaders in full immersion gaming, and this is the pregame show only on the NBL Network. NBL Live Broadcast 226 is live here on twitch.tv slash NBL Network. Welcome everybody to the NBL Live Pregame Show brought to you each and every week by our graphic sponsor web3ks.com. They've got a great deal going on right now. You've seen how many graphics they do for the NBL Network. If you or anyone you know needs graphics done, hit up web3ks.com. Let them know NBL sent you. You'll get a 15% discount on your entire order. Web3ks.com, the leaders in affordable graphic design. Boy, do we have a great game on tap for you tonight, folks. I'm OSU. I'm hanging out with my man, the Kamish Bomber, the Triple H to my Shawn Michaels. Whatever you want to go with. I, no, I'm Shawn Michaels. No, you Triple H. You run the, the show. You're the COO. Nice oh, try. wait. What, I don't know if you oh, the COO I'm then. So sorry. No, no you, you are. I'm you, talking 99, 98, you know? Dibs, dibs on X-Pac. Dibs on X-Pac. I am the X-Pac. Well, you want the go-away heat or what? Yeah, oh, yeah. Absolutely. Where's 100%. Draco at? Where's NXT? Oh, we can't get into this now. Man, Let's NXT. not get into it. Uh, we got a great game on tap. It is an AFC matchup between the Chargers and the Titans. Uh, Bomber, if I could, like, give a, a tagline to this particular... My wife is staring at me through the window. It's terrifying. Hello. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. I can't... I hope that means you can get in. I hope the door's not locked. Anywho. Uh, <laughs> if I could give a tagline to this particular game, uh, uh, I would I would tag this one, Oh What Once Was. These are two teams that were sort of the perennial tops of their division, the perennial AFC contenders. It's been a rough year so far for both these teams. Yeah, you look at the standings, the win-losses. I was about to bring that up myself. Uh, the 3-5 and five Tennessee Titans, then you see the 3-5 and five Los Angeles Chargers, and you think to yourself, this is probably not going to be a good matchup. Broadcast number 226 might not be that good, but these two teams are rich in MBL history and rich in MBL success. Well, at least the Los Angeles Chargers have been. They've won the big game before. But that doesn't mean that because they're both 3-5 and five, that this isn't going to be a great game. I think this might be a candidate for the MBL Live Game of the Year. If you're looking for the MBL Live Game of the Year, you can go to youtube.com backslash Madden Bomber League and hit that playlist Game of the Year. We have all our Game of the Years uh, in that playlist as they come up each year i think this might be a candidate and it might be kind of an obscure kind of game where you say hey man remember when two three and five teams went at it and they put on that tremendous performance we could witness that tonight on nbl live my wife is talking to me i don't know what she's doing <laughs> say hi hi now go away oh let's get her on the let's get her on the broadcast real quick you, you want to poke your head in you want to say hi I'm not like that. There's a camera. No, she needs to say, uh, she needs to do the Terrell and say holla. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, she's, oh god, she's coming. Oh boy. Well, this is getting interesting quick. See, you right there. See? Tell her we got 44 people watching. Yeah. 44 people watching. Don't say anything stupid. <laughs> say Bomber's gonna this win is, Super Bowl, uh, 30. What, what Hi. season is it? Say, say Bomber's not even gonna make the Super Bowl. Bomber's <laughs> not even going to make the Super Bowl. So oh, tough wow. loss. That's tough loss there. Jeez. That is tough. That's it. Sorry, babe, Bomber. come here. Babe. Look, look, what is happening? We're wife. losing it here on the pregame. <laughs> Go away. Get out of here. Don't kick the green screen. I'm not going to kick the green screen. Okay. Anywho. Uh, what did you kick? I didn't kick anything. Okay. All right, we're about to go off the air here, yeah, man. We're she's like she's got to pick her we're feet up, man. She's got she to start doing that defensive step... slide to get out of there. Yeah. Uh, anywho, we've got a tournament. Uh, hold on. There's the tournament graphic. There's the right one. Uh, we got a tournament coming up. Uh, 64 players. Signed Saquon Barkley. We're talking about it all the time here on the NBL Network. Um, Bomber, I, we are, we are, the number of applicants we've got is climbing and climbing fast. So if people want to get in this tournament, want a chance at that Saquon Barkley helmet, want a chance to win over $1,000 worth of prizes, they better apply quickly. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, our applicants. What is our applicants up to? Are we over 120, 130 yep. right now? 140. Yep. I think. I think we're. I think we're. Last I looked, he said yes to all. Three. 130 he, plus. I, I, last 130 I plus applicants already. We're only accepting 64. We start accepting them on July 
what is it, 7th? July 7th, you should have a, a notification in your email. The first 10 to 12 will be accepted around then. And then every week from July 7th, expect 10 to 12 emails to go out uh, to get accepted. So if you're one of the lucky few to get accepted, man, uh, good for you. Uh, it, it's going to be a tough road to get into this tournament as we already have over 130. We're expecting around, what, 250 to 300 applicants on this tournament? That's the hope. That's the certain hope. Uh, people That's are excited to get That's in the this. Goal. Uh, over a thousand dollars in prizes, too, might I add. And, and we've uh, already raised. Bomber, what it costs? For... What ten okay. bucks to get in this tournament? No, 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 no. I, I think it's a little less. Uh, five bucks? Uh, is it a five dollar tournament? Yeah, five. I, know, I think just a little bit less. I think maybe two. Is it, you're not going to say it's free, are you? No, you're not going to say it's free. free. It can't we be free. We won't make any money if Check it's free. Check that one out. No, wait, wait, wait. We can't do free. It will cost us too much money. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting, I'm getting breaking from pricey. Yeah, bomber, it's free. That's what he said. That's what he said oh. right there. Oh, wow. So this tournament's free. We're giving up $1,000 in prizes. We got sponsors donating to our, our charity, Operation Homefront for the Veterans. We already raised 1200 How are we going to make any money on this? This is free, and we have a 12-hour stream? That's no shit. way. That, you know, listen. It's wow. all about raising money for Operation Homefront. We're trying to do some good in some community. And in supporting the, community. the, the, the Madden franchise community doing this tournament every year it, it's a yeah. great it's a great fun cause i mean we kid about it being free absolutely free won't cost you a thing you just got to get accepted and and we're going through and, and meddling through all these applicants and trying to make sure we get the best people that are interested in performing for our tournament and can be on our tournament because we got that 12-hour stream coming up on august 2nd i hope yep. you're ready i hope you got those pipes ready i've got the vocal uh, cords working uh doing, <laughs> doing my uh exercises and uh, again you can go to our twitter at bomber league you can actually check out uh the first sort of run at our limited edition t-shirts we'll be giving out by giving out i mean selling for operation homefront all this going to operation homefront a great charity for our military family so make sure you apply now if you haven't applied if you can't apply if you don't have an xbox if you just don't want to get in this tournament make sure you tune in during our 12-hour stream make sure you donate to operation homefront during that stream so we can do some good for our military families all right let's get to today's game between the Chargers and the titans take a look at some players to watch and first for the tennessee titans is darren anunwa Bomber, this is a guy who I have said over and over, I think he's the most underrated player because nobody talks about this guy in Tennessee, and he is having an unbelievable season. 23 tackles, 15 sacks. That's right, 15 sacks. He's still got six games to go. He also has a pick six, so let's point that out. Uh, Darren Anuma has been an absolute beast on the line for Tennessee. He's probably been the most consistent player in the NBL defensively, and I just don't think anybody talks about him enough. Yeah, I, I like how you said on the line. He's a left outside linebacker, but you see him often down on the line of scrimmage. He's such a phenomenal athlete. I want to read out his sack total since MBL season 26. I believe that's when we got him. Uh, 17 sacks, 19 sacks, 11 sacks, 20 sacks, 21 sacks, 15 sacks. So one thing's for sure. This guy's getting double-digit sacks every season from the outside linebacker position. And they move him around. He'll be on the left side. He'll be on the right side. He'll be standing up at the line. He'll be down in the line. I mean, he does nearly everything defensively for this team. And uh, as you said, and somehow he managed to get a pick six as well. And, and I mean... He's 87 speed, 88 excel. He's 6'4", 254. What can't Darren Anunwa do? Uh, he's been phenomenal. And, and, and I, excuse me, he came in the first rookie draft, NBL season uh, 27. And I think the Tennessee Titans are pretty happy with what Darren Anunwa has turned into. Let's take a look at the player to watch for the Los Angeles Charger. And who else but the only 2,000-yard rusher in NBL history? Melvin Gordon. 126 carries this year, 809 rushing yards, 6.4 per carry, and 7 touchdowns. Bomber, for anybody else, I think we saw this card before when we were talking about the uh, running back in New Orleans. Anybody else, this looks like a great year. Melvin Gordon, though, we look at this, we know what he's done with the 2,000-yard season. We know what he's done. He had a rushing average up over 8. He has been one of the best running backs, possibly the best for multiple seasons in the NBL. My question for you is, are we expecting too much out of Melvin Gordon? Is the bar set too high, and maybe we should bring that bar down, or is Melvin Gordon truly underperforming? You know, I, I think of this question, uh, you know, I take it personal because I'm actually a huge fan of Melvin Gordon, and I always look at Melvin Gordon's stats, and I think the same thing. And if the bar's too high, it's because he said it that way. I mean, let's go back. You know, we're in season 32. NBL season 29, he went 255 attempts for 2,101 yards and 26 touchdowns. He broke records across the board. He's 30 years no old now. We want to say he's slowing down, but let's not hold him to our limitations. Two of the last three games, he's gone 17 carries, a buck 37. Versus the Kansas City Chiefs in, in week eight of NBL season 32. That's two weeks ago. 22 carries, 247 yards, and two touchdowns. Horrible. 
Kid's been <laughs> kid's been That's horrible. horrible. He's he, he's definitely. Did Busey go for four touchdowns? Why didn't Melvin Gordon have four? Yeah, and, and that's what you're trying. saying. I mean, this this guy. It, the NBL fantasy football draft, he's going number one every year. Even at 30 years old, you cannot pass on him because he's going to one week just put put up crazy 60 points for you and then probably average 30, 25 to 30 the whole entire season. I mean, he's just been he's just been a wrecking ball for the Los Angeles Chargers. But, yeah, yeah he's kind of having a down year, I guess. Uh, let's take a look at Bleacher Report, uh, our NBL Bleacher Report. Their predictions for this game between the Titans and the Chargers, and it is heavily leaning Towards the Chargers, only J.Y. leaning on the side of the bald liar himself, Sonny Weaver. Uh, Bomber, who do you like to win this one? Uh, you like Melvin Gordon and the Chargers, or the Tennessee Titans going to come out with a win? This is a huge game for both teams to stay in the playoff race. And let me throw one other question at you before you give that prediction. Are we yeah. not giving the Tennessee Titans enough respect? I mean, this is an AFC team who's been their division champion this entire cycle. Are we not giving them enough respect against the Chargers? All right, I'm going to answer this, and I'm going to go with the the, the the answer for the question first. Uh, I'm going with Al Mizzle here. Chargers win big 42-17. to 17. That's what he says, and this is a biased guess. I'm, a, I'm with that number exactly. Chargers win 42-17. Wow. to 17. Here, Here's the thing. People are putting their emotions into the picks with Sonny. They do not like Sonny. They like to pick against him. So Sonny Weaver is always going to be a guy that you pick against, and JY would be picking against him except for the fact that everybody else picked against him. So he went with the Titans. So just to be different is the only way you end up on that side. But I'm right there with you guys. We want Sonny to lose. Let's make sure he loses tonight. Hashtag bald liar. I never vote on him for highly debatable. The baldable is what some people call it. Highly I never vote for the bald liar. I'm always going with OSU. And uh, tonight's no different. I'm going with the opposition of Sonny. And that's going to be the Los Angeles Chargers. And my Champions Club member, Gub, who's in his final. He's doing a little victory lap here in the NBL. This is going to be his last season in the NBL. Really excited to get this kicked off. Should be a great game, folks. If you missed Highly Debatable, check it out after this game over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Madden You know my thoughts there. I said it's going to be Titanfall 3. It's going to be the Chargers big tonight. It's only one way to find out, folks. We appreciate you tuning into the NBL Live pregame show, but it is game time. Let's get this Week 10 matchup underway. Coming up next, it is Battle of Two of the AFC Powers, having some down years but still looking to stay in that playoff race. It's the Los Angeles Chargers and the Tennessee Titans. It's coming up right now here on NBL Live. I just want to say, hey, man, this is T.O., the cover athlete of the Madden 19 Hall of Fame edition, and you're watching the gold standard of the franchise mode. The MBL Network. Holla. Empty backfield for Atkins. He's going to be driving back to pass here on fourth down. He is looking. He's looking deep over the middle. He has a man. It's Brandon Coach. Who catches it? Makes a man miss. He Oh, that's so Woodard is dropping back. He's got open over the middle. He's wow. Right and that big playmaker of Look at him he go. finds him again. Into the end zone. Another touchdown. touchdown. MBL Live Broadcast 226 is live here on twitch.tv slash MBL Network. We appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. I'm OSU. I'm hanging out with my man, the commish himself, Bomber. Bomber, I'm, I got to ask you, this might be the toughest question I've ever asked you, so I need you to prepare for this one, all right? Okay, all right. I know Terrell Owens, our good friend of the network, T.O., he doesn't have a lot going on up top, all right? So here's the question. is Would T.O. pick a bald liar, or would he sit there and go, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, whoa, whoa, whoa. I may not have a lot up top, but I, I have a lot of integrity, and I don't go for bald liars. I, I think Terrell Owens is going to base it more on entertainment value. That's what he was about, entertaining the fans, putting up the big numbers, just like what OSU does whoop. on Highly Debatable. And whoop, just a little spin move right there for the Los Angeles Chargers. And they're feeling good already. We're going to see Carson Wentz under center. We're going to see Melvin Gordon in the backfield. And they got some uh, aging wide receivers still with a little bit of juice left in the tank. For them, I think they have Jarvis Landry, Keenan Allen, 
And then Mike Williams. Uh, just a little Mike Williams. Just throw him in there. Carson Wentz, quarterback rating of 99.3 so far this year. 11 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. On first down, it's going to be Melvin Gordon with the carry over the right side. He'll pick up two on the play. Didn't see who went down on that one. Uh, give him a, a three yards. Going to bring up a second and seven. And Bomber, you got to you got to think if the Chargers are going to have success today and come out with a win, establishing that run game early will be crucial. Absolutely. The Los Angeles Chargers, the wheels on the bus go ground and pound for this team. So establishing the run game is a must. Let's see if they can do that early in this game, get Melvin Gordon going in at 32, 30 years young. Yeah, it's not 30 years old for MG2K. As on second and seven, it's going to be Gordon getting the carry once again, going over that left side. Good job up front by uh, getting to Melvin Gordon before he could get that second level. He'll be taken down after a two-yard game, going to bring up a third and five. Mario Edwards, the former Oakland Raider with the tackle, and now an opportunity for Tennessee to get an early three and out. That's one thing you've noticed with the decline of Melvin Gordon, if, if I can even say that. He was at such a high stature. Now he's still above everybody else. Just a subtle decline. His elusiveness just not like what it used to be uh, in NBL seasons 27, 28, 29, 30. Shotgun formation for Wentz here on third and five. Three wide receivers, one tight end as he drops back to pass on third down. Waiting, waiting, and who else but Hunter Henry, the safety blanket that Carson Wentz has been carrying around for four seasons now. He picks up a big first down. Sonny, I, you know, a lot of times you see defenses key in on a wide receiver for the L.A. Chargers. They can contain Hunter Henry and take away that safe middle of the field read. They're going to make Carson Wentz real uncomfortable. Don't call me, son. Yeah, the I middle of the field. <laughs> the middle of the this field. This is what I get for doing two shows at once. It, I'm sorry. That is open. a clear insult, Bomber. You are not a bald liar. <laughs> the in bald. middle of the field might be open if uh, Sonny continues to use her, but if they can shut it down, it's going to be a big plus. Uh, for the Tennessee Titans as they look at Hunter Henry, middle of the field. That's, that's a big-time factor here for Carson Wentz. Uh, second and 11 now. As so far, uh, Bomber, three carries for Gordon. Tennessee, they have a very good defensive line. It seems like one of their strengths will be to stop Melvin Gordon, one of the few teams that may be able to do that. Absolutely. Big, big shout-out, though, before I get my project fat, fat on with the absolutely. Big shout-out to experts in the chat right now. The Dynasty doing some great stuff. On to PlayStation 4, also a sponsor for our uh, MBL EA Access Tournament. As Keenan Allen just tries to find himself to the sideline. He, once an, another guy on this Boy, team kind of chasing father, father Time. Yeah. Yeah, and then, I mean, would you say, I, I mean, they haven't had any glaring problems. Defensively, they've been a little worse, but it just seems like this is a team. The reason why they're struggling this year is they just don't have the speed and the youth that they used to have. They're just getting older. Third and long. Let's see what Carson can do. And he's in the shotgun with three wide receivers. Two to the left, one over the right. Melvin Gordon to the right of Carson. Once he drops back on third and nine. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Oh, this is bad news, Bears. He's going to have to chuck this one out of bounds and punt this ball away. Uh, Bomber, the other thing I've noticed with this uh, Chargers team uh, is that the play calling has been, I don't want to say suspect, but predictable. Uh, third and nine, they basically, they just run the little curl flat concept, and Tennessee knows to expect that out of them on third down. Yeah, absolutely. You, I did it again. The Project Fat once again. Here, here, here's what happened. Absolutely. The Chargers have found themselves in a position they're normally not in. Uh, so they like to be in those third and fives, third and fours. Anything shorter than five, it's a real manageable passing run down for them. A balanced attack is what, the, what their strength is. When they get into a third and nine, which is pretty much a third and really long for them, it seems like they just play for the sticks. They're playing to get to that first down marker, and Tennessee knows that. While the, you might not be able to play the sticks in this mat, it doesn't work very well. The Titans are usering and they're making the proper adjustments pre-snap and making sure their guys are there. And it's, it causes problems for the Chargers. Big shout-out to IC through you, 247, with the five months of subscribing. As uh, Titans are backed up, first and 10, handoff over the left side. That'll get them some breathing room all the way up to the 10-yard line. Bryant Vance with the carry. And Sonny loves to tell Bryant Vance how good he is. I'll ask you, Bomber. How good is Bryant Vance? Is he a top-five oh. running back? Brian Vance is fast. A top five running back. I don't know if he has all the tools, but this was a fifth round pick. Virginia Tech University, 5'11", 211 pounds, 95 speed. So Brian Vance, he's really, really Open quick. Open down the field, and he's got some room. He's up to the 40, up past the 50. Is there enough speed for the Chargers defense to catch him? He's up past the 20. He'll be caught at the 17-yard line. Little play action rollout, and Jameis Winston's first throw. How about a, a, a cool... 73 yards on that pass all the way down to the 17-yard line. Thomas with the catch. That's just too easy. You got two routes combing over from the left to the right, the strong side of the field to the weak side of the field. It's just too easy for these wide receivers to get open with that kind of space. Chargers have to do a better job in play calling there. Can't allow those big games from a Tennessee Titans team you had backed up uh, inside their tent. 
Michael Thomas, the uh, former New Orleans Saint, getting into the action here on NBL Live. First and 10, two ends, two wide receivers. For Jameis Winston, he drops back on first and 10. Waiting, waiting, rolling out to the left side. Nobody open. He's going to try to find... Oh, he didn't get the feet in bounds. Winston recognized that late um, and just tried to float one over to the sidelines. Just a little too tight over there for Thomas to make his second catch on the day. Going to bring up a second and 10. The inaccuracies of Jameis Winston, it really doesn't make sense. Uh, a guy that can throw well on the run, particularly does it often, but right there just seems a little off. Uh, we've seen him get his feet in the pocket, do the same thing. So just really head-scratching moment there from Jameis Winston. That's becoming a norm. Oh, he's got a man open in the end zone. Touchdown, Titans. Jameis Winston rolled to the left side. He started to take off. The cornerback left his man, and it was an easy pitch over the top. Touchdown, Titans, as they look to extend it, and they do. It is up and good. 7-0 your score. Famous Jameis doing it again. Yeah, what was the cornerback doing there? At some point, you have to realize he can't get too far behind you. There's just only 10 yards past that goal line. So he could have played in between both of those guys and then played the quarterback if he decided to sneak or if he just decided to throw it over the top, he probably could have made a play, but instead he sells out for the quarterback. And that's just an easy layup for Jameis Winston and these Titans team. Mothman, 491, how are you able to commentate on this? Is this one of the league members stream you're capturing? This is a really cool setup, NBL Network. Mothman, yes, indeed, we have our guys stream their games on Twitch, and we just uh, do a little restream with an overlay and, uh, and coordinate the uh, streams. Got to make sure they line up, uh, and that's how we call these games. Big shout-out to Mothman, 491, just as I mentioned him. Uh, is now hosting our stream. Appreciate the host. Try Hard Guy, what is going on? Welcome to the NBL Network. Welcome to the hey, chat. Hey, Try First. Hard Guy, that guy's pretty funny, man. He was uh, there when we was giving away the beta codes for Madden 19. Uh, Keenan Allen with the catch underneath. Takes a big hit. He is down clutching his arm. Uh, Bomber, uh, we're less than three minutes into this game. I think we've already seen five injuries. Yeah, the injuries seem to be piling up here. This is Week 10, NBL Season 32, our final season of the Madden 18 franchise cycle. Uh, yeah, the injuries, man. This season, it seems like they've been coming at a steady pace, man. So you got to make sure your trainer's uh, A1. First and 10. Quick post route to Mike Williams. It is complete down to the 43-yard line. But, Bomber, even on that play, looked yeah. like Carson Wentz a little antsy in the pocket. He let go of that yeah. early. You wait just a second longer. Mike Williams might still be running between the safeties. I have to wonder what Carson Wentz was seeing. You got two high safeties. It looks like a cover two zone. You hike it. It plays like a cover two zone. It looks like it. Wait, allow him to split those safeties. You could have got a bigger game there, Carson. First and 10 handoff to Melvin Gordon over the left side. He's got some good blocking. He's got the edge. He has the first down and more up to the 29-yard line. Four carries for Melvin. That was the best one of the day. As we find out, Keenan Allen, add him to the list of the walking wounded, will not be returning with the dreaded shoulder tear. It has been uh, afflicting a lot of people in the NBL. Allen will not be returning the game, will not be returning for uh, what should be a couple of weeks, and that could be a big loss for this Chargers team looking to stay in the playoff hunt. As this Carson Wentz under center, bunch formation, three to the right side, one over to the left, Melvin Gordon in the backfield here. 2-16 and counting in the first quarter. This is a little counter run for Melvin Gordon, and uh, Melvin Gordon got uh, uh, just just a little taste of what the Tennessee Titans can do as Mario Edwards gets in the backfield and drops him for a five-yard loss. It just seems like the Tennessee Titans front line enforces their will, opposes their will against the offensive line. You're asking number seven, uh, number, what was that, number 85, 86, the tight yeah. end to come across and pull. It just didn't happen as they blew it up real quick. Uh, Blitz picked up. Wentz just going to toss this out to the flat, completes it to Melvin Gordon, who's going to have a nice gain up to the 23-yard line. And Bomber, that's what I think Chargers fans have been imploring for Carson Wentz to do. Take what the defense gives you. Maybe don't chuck it down the field so much and just pitch it to the open Melvin Gordon in the flat. Absolutely. You take a second and long. That looks like it's probably going to be a third and long. You give it to Melvin Gordon. Now he puts you inside that third and five. This is when I say the Chargers are dangerous. If they can be inside that third and five, third and four area, they're a really tough team to get off the field. They're going to keep the chains moving. Let's see if the Titans can force the Chargers to uh, kick a field goal here. On third and four, it is two wide set for Carson Wentz. He drops back to pass on third and four. Waiting, waiting, looks underneath, completes to the fullback. LeVar on the angle route, and look at him get up to the nine-yard line. Boy, he shows some breakaway speed there. Don't usually see the fullback with those hands and that acceleration, but LeVar picks up 14 on the play and a huge first down for the Chargers. See, that's a really simple read for Carson Wentz. He's got the out route on the left side that he checks if it's man coverage. Then he just does a little two-man read, the tight end running it out, and then the halfback uh, running the angle route, the fullback, excuse me, running a little Texas route out the backfield. Just easy-peasy third and four for Carson Wentz. And it's going to be Perry with the carry. No Melvin Gordon into the game. Perry picks up a yard on the play. Going to bring up a second and goal to the eight-yard line. 
Uh, Bobber, I know Melvin Gordon probably needed a blow there after being on the field for so long, but do you like taking out Melvin Gordon, putting in the backup, and then giving the backup a carry? Absolutely not, but the Chargers have been doing it this entire cycle. That's what they do. Uh, Perry on the season, he's got 11 carries. They've all came in the red zone. They like to bring him in and just kind of give a little mixed look to the defense. Melvin Gordon back in the game here on second and goal. And, uh, the, oh, got him. Uh, it's the old, it's the old Sonny, it. it's the old Sonny Weaver. Oh, no, I was not aggressive, Sonny. We all know you are. We all saw Sonny it. Likes right it. Let, let, let's talk a little bit about Sonny Weaver as he runs this Tennessee Titans organization. He likes to put on aggressive when they get inside of the 10 or on their uh, inside of their own 10 because can't give up that he many. knows that you can't give up 10. You're not going to give up too many yards. It's going to be half the distance. So they're at the four yard line here as they were on the eight. Second and goal handoff to Melvin Gordon who uh, runs right into the brick wall of people. And that was a play, Bomber, that you might have seen Melvin Gordon in the past cut it to the right side where there was a big opening. Instead, uh, what you saw there was he ran into the uh, the full group of people and didn't go well for old Melvin Gordon. Yeah, everything gets tighter inside the five, and that's where they're at right now. They're at the four, they gain a yard, third and goal. Let's see if they go back to Melvin Gordon. A guy, in the, uh, a couple guys in the chat, Mothman, saying, so are you guys just commentating or are you a member of the NBL? OSU? Uh, we are both. Both commentators and members of the NBL. Uh, Bomber, my co-host, is the commissioner of the NBL, owner of the Detroit Lions. I'm the owner of the Oakland Raiders. Is on third down and goal. They hand it to Melvin Gordon. Three runs inside the 10-yard line. The runs themselves only got him two yards. It was the offside that got him the majority of that. And Boy, Bomber, that's sort of been the problem for the Chargers. Uh, very predictable. And once they get inside the 10-yard uh, line, they don't have the offensive line anymore to be able to ram it down the defense's throat anymore. And you have to really put that in your bag if you're Los Angeles. Did you notice what he did there on that third and uh, from the three-yard line, third and goal? What did he do? What he did ran committed uh, on that play. Now, if someone's going to run commit when you're inside the five, you can use that to your advantage. Come out in a goal line or a power formation, run a play action, or run something with a quick slant on the on the strong side of the field. This is going to give you opportunities. You're seeing a really aggressive Tennessee Titans defense inside the 10. Let's see if Los Angeles gets inside of that red zone, inside of the 10, and they make adjustments the next time down the field because you can use that to your advantage if you're the Chargers. Number one draft pick saying, wow, lots of viewers. That's awesome. Number one draft pick. One of the participants in our first EA Access tournament just got his application for this second EA Access Oh, wow. Tournament, Will so. he make the cut? Because July 7th is the first emails that come out. I think, what are we doing, 10 to 12 emails? I think we're doing 10. We'll do 10 for the first. We're going to do 10 a week up until the tournament until we fill out that 64-man tournament. Make sure you apply now. Uh, 365.madambombardleague.com under the EA Access Tournament tab. You can apply. It is free to enter as long as you have an Xbox. You can play. Uh, thousand over a thousand dollars worth of prizes. First place gets that signed Saquon Barkley helmet. First and ten, hand off to Bryant Vance, who bounces off of a guy, makes a spin move, and after all that dancing and spinning, gets no gain on play. Going to bring up a second and ten. All right, I'm going to add it to my win in doubt rhymes. Win in doubt, spin it out. That seems what Brian Vance did there. He ran into his own blocker, said, "Hey, I got a little bit of space. Maybe if I just go into a spin now." That animation will carry me and find me the hole that I need to be in. That didn't quite work for him there, but did get him back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, our tournaments are absolutely free. This is our second annual one. Guys, also remember we have over 130 applicants. The tournament is still over a month away. We're expecting to get 250 to 300 applicants, so get your application in now to have the opportunity to get that email. Don't want to miss out as uh, that slate gets all the way across the field and Jameis Winston puts it right on the money. Big first down there for the Tennessee Titans and uh, Bomber, we talk about sort of what are the diagnoses for this Chargers team that was so dominant for so many years. We talk about the offensive line not being as good, but the defensive line, they're not creating the pressure they have in years past. You think Joey Bosa, you think these big hosses that they have on the defensive line are going to get to the quarterback. You got Ratliff there on the right end position. It's just not happening right now and hasn't happened this season for the Los Angeles Chargers. Redemption 97X saying Bomber has a commentator voice. No, that's cool, man. Don't mention me as I'm first and 10. Shotgun formation for Jameis Winston. Three wide receivers, two over to the left, one to the right side. And Bryant Vance in the backfield with Winston in the shotgun. His man going in motion. Looks like they're setting up that little orbit bubble screen, and it was covered the entire way by the Chargers. So they bring him down for a loss of three on the play. Going to bring up a second and long. Well, can I give my response to Redemption? Yeah, go Well, on. thank you for saying that I have a commentator. All right, now we're done. Yeah, no, you're too far. You're done. Get out. I started feeling myself, guys, and it, and it took me to a place I, I hope I never go pause. again, OSU. Pause, pause, pause. <laughs> Can't do that on Yeah, pause. Just Can't a, do a, that apply on when necessary on, on that one. Eh, second and 13, <laughs> I formation. Top of the eyes, Bryant Vance, two wide receivers over to the left side. As on second and 13, it's Winston driving back to pass. Rush coming up the middle, and down goes Winston. First sack of the day, it was Paul Holloman. Able to get in the backfield and bring him down for a nine-yard loss. The first pressure we've really seen on Jameis Winston. 
Yeah, see what happened right there? The corner route on the right side to the tight end. He was waiting on that to break to pull the user to the right to allow the crossing route or the little end to come across the middle. And the corner route just didn't break quick enough, and the defensive pressure was able to get to the quarterback. Big shout out to Two Shorts now following here on Twitch. Third and long. It's Winston dropping back. Oh, what a block on the backside. He's got a man <laughs> open, and he's got some room up to the 20, down to the 15-yard line. Oh, what a pickup on the blitz on the outside. Got absolutely obliterated. I think that was Joey Bosa upended on the left side, and it allowed the wide receiver to come all the way from the right to the left, and Jameis Winston finds Corey Davis for a huge gain and a big conversion. Was that the halfback with the little cut block? Right oh, there? yeah, it was. That was Brian so Vance think, lowering the shoulder. Do you think Brian Vance said, hey, Joey, you get past that guy, I'm going to flip you over my back if you do, all right? I'm just letting you know that right now. It seemed like it played out exactly like that. Just phenomenal blocking. Uh, and then four, <laughs> four Los Angeles Chargers there uh, met up with Brian Vance in the backfield to give him a little payback and a loss of two on the play. Yeah, it always gets tough when you get inside the red zone, man. These are two teams that are 3-5 and five right now, and you want to know why? Inside the red zone, they finished 27-28. and 28. The Titans are 27th wow. in the red zone. The Chargers are 28th. This is why these teams struggle, and they always end up having to settle for three, and that's the big difference between wins and losses. Second and 12, dropping back as Winston. Blitz coming around the outside. It was not picked up, and down goes Winston as Betts comes around the outside. Uh, that was a big play for the Chargers to drop him back to a third and 22, and this is a, a great position for the Chargers because there's not a whole lot of room for the Tennessee Titans to work. The Titans love working vertically down the field. The Chargers, now that they're in this sort of short field, are going to be able to stop that. It's on third and 22. It's, it's right down the middle. There were literally four Chargers in the area. It was a bad decision the entire way. And the Titans are lucky they're getting a field goal attempt out of this drive. Yeah, getting a little antsy there for Jameis Winston. He gets sacked twice, and he starts questioning. He starts hesitating, then decides on third and 22. He's going to take a shot down the middle of the field. The kick is up, and it's good. Extend that lead to 10 to 3. Uh, bummer, you look at the Titans and the Chargers. Offensively, they're similar in that they are a, a run-first team. They both love their running backs in Gordon and in Vance. But in terms of the passing game, Carson Wentz is much more of that West Coast quarterback, the underneath, the slant rounds. They're going to work methodically down the field. The Titans are going to take much more shots over the top. It's going to be up to whichever defense can recognize that pattern better and which one can stop it more. Yeah, it's all about the defense. Absolutely. This is about the defense, the defense, the defense, and then the run game as well. Even though early you might be confused and think it's about the Tennessee Titans passing attack, it won't be down the stretch if they can keep this game close. I formation for the LA Chargers. Melvin Gordon at the top of that I two wide receivers out there for Carson Wentz. He tosses out to Melvin Gordon. Melvin Gordon, boy, oh boy, this is not the Melvin Gordon we have seen in the past. So many times in the past we've seen Melvin Gordon cut it upfield, hit that hole, and pick up a big gain. Instead, he tries to stay outside too long, gets taken down for a two-yard loss. Definitely has lost some elusiveness, some acceleration. 30 years old, we know the Madden cutoff time is 28. Once you hit 28, you just start slowly falling down. This is a guy that fell from grace rather quickly from 2,000 yards, now struggling to hit that 1,400, 1,300-yard mark. Second and 12, Wentz dropping back. Blitz picked up nicely by the offensive line, and Wentz looked right to his safety blanket. Hunter Henry over the middle, and the Titans were all over that one. Lucky that wasn't going the other way, and... Boy, I feel like, Bomber, we're going to be saying that a lot. Lucky that wasn't a turnover because these two quarterbacks are not playing at the top of their ability. Yeah, and I think the halfback was naked, wide open as he ran to the flat on the right side. I didn't see anybody over there. I quickly glanced. I know I'm coming from the position of the broadcaster seeing everything slower than the actual player, but right there it just seemed like a little check down to Melvin Gordon probably would have been the best solution. Third and 12, four wide receivers out there for Carson Wentz under center. Melvin Gordon in the backfield on third and 12. Wentz dropping back, waiting, waiting, looking, steps up in the pocket, waiting, waiting. Nobody is open, so he's going to have to take off. He's going to be taken down at the 33-yard line, short of the first down marker. And Bomber, once again, we look at the play calling on third down. as a third and relatively long at a third and 12. Call a slant flat concept, hop route one of the wide receivers to a streak. But at the end of the day, the play calling is so questionable. Seems like they just don't know what to do when it gets to these third and more than about four. But a oh, great a punt. punt right what here punt. is just going to, yeah, that's going to put them, they, they did that last time. The special teams, the punter for the, for the Los Angeles Chargers, number one right there. He's looking like the best punter in the league right now. Just another phenomenal kick. Going to put them inside their own five at the three yard line to start. 
though, if you're struggling on offense, get some good special teams play, and now your defense steps up. You got an opportunity to get back in the game here if you're Los Angeles Chargers. Man coming to motion. He's going to run the up. Oh, nope, he's going to run it. I thought he was going to try the PAFK quick inside the five yard line. Instead, it's just a fake with a handoff, and the uh, Chargers were not fooled at all. They didn't fall for the, uh, the fake quick. They were able to stay home and bring down Bryant Vance for no gain. Going to bring up a second and 10 as we're going to hit the two minute warning. Al Mizzle in the chat right now saying, here comes another 73-yard play, question mark, potentially. Titans do like to get just a little dangerous right here and drive it down the field because if it's picked, they want to make sure that it at least gives them a little cushion and doesn't put their defense in such a horrible spot. But I could see them taking a shot down the field here. They did it earlier. I know it was kind of on a nice uh, bl uh, pass-blocking play there for the halfback against Joey Bosa. Maybe that doesn't quite happen again, but they're looking to go deep down the field. I could see a shot play coming up here for the Tennessee Titans. Yeah, now second and 10. Oh, oh, Sonny Weaver breaks out the monster formation. Hands it off to Brian Vance up the middle. Gets nothing. Gets gimmicky. Hey, hey Sonny Weaver, uh, he's not gimmicky at all, Bomber. He doesn't like those gimmicky formations. The Wildcat, the monster is JJ Westbrook 23. Now following here on Twitch, he doesn't like any of that, he says. But uh, he, his mouth says one thing. His play says another. When in doubt, gimmick it out. And when you're on your own five, oh you start giving Hey, 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 I got a bunch of them. No, I know, right? I know. And it all runs. You're, you're, you're the MBL's Dr. Seuss. We got it. Third and out and out are going to stay the same. I'm just changing the, the, right. the, the inside. Well, let's, he's, he's no uh, Robert Frost over here. It's going to be Dr. Seuss. Everything <laughs> rhymes with out. As they play, this, play it safe, toss it to Maker on third down, and they're going to be forced to punt this one away. And so well, here's the disappointing part right here. Tennessee Titans number 27. That's Eddie George's number. To allow a backup halfback to carry that number. Ah, ah. Oh, that's treacherous waters for me. I, 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 I tend to stay away from it. You know where Eddie George went to school? He went to school at the Ohio State University. Not not any of the other of these. Just the Ohio State University. Shout out to Eddie George. Uh, as on fourth and seven, is punted away. Good field position here. Up past the 40-yard line to the 39. And So maybe this will help the Chargers offense, Bomber. Maybe this will get them going as they only have to go 39 yards for a touchdown. A minute six to go. The question is, can they do it? Both of these teams are really bad in the red zone, so I wouldn't be surprised if they end up settling for three here. But the most important part is not to take a sack here to take you out of field goal range. You have to come away with at least three, take your shots down the field, but do not give up this field position right now. I think they're right on the cusp of where their kicker can kick this field goal from. It'd be, what, 56 yards from this area? Yep, it would be a 56-yard uh, a field goal. Exactly. As I'm first in 10, Wentz waiting, waiting. He has a... Oh, Carson. Oh, wow. Look like a dead duck out of the hand. Just, just sort of, just, just didn't put enough mustard on that one. That was a catch up right there, as uh, nobody was going to get to that ball. And boy, when it, you have a guy that open, bomber, those are the plays that your quarterback needs to make. You know, this is an elite quarterback by stats, Carson Wentz. He came from Philly, where he played horrible. Came to Los Angeles to revive his career. And right there, I mean, great protection. Step up, set your feet, rip it, and and, and what happens? I don't know. Just a, just a head scratching moment here for Carson Wentz. Second and 10. They're going to hand off to Melvin Gordon. Who goes right up the middle, runs right at the user, and it's taken down at the 34-yard line. Don't know if that was the path I would have taken, but he picked up five on the play. Uh, attack the user, attack the user. That's what they're doing right here. Third and five. This is when they're the best at keeping the chains moving. Third and five or shorter for the Los Angeles Chargers. Let's see if they can continue that trend here late into the second quarter, but they still have three timeouts. 46 seconds and counting here. In the second quarter, got to expect if the Chargers don't pick up the first down, the Titans are going to use one of those timeouts and try to get some points before the half as we're down at the 40-second mark. It's Carson Wentz, two tight ends, two wide receivers. Melvin Gordon in the backfield. Wentz can drop back to pass. Blitz coming right up the middle. He gets it off to Hunter Henry, and I believe he has enough for the first down at the 29-yard line, and he does indeed. Great recognition there by Carson Wentz, seeing the blitz right up the middle and getting rid of the ball quickly. And more importantly, Hunter Henry just has a nose for that first down marker. He turns his head. He makes sure the ball is positioned where it needs to be. So when he falls forward, the ref's going to be making that signal. Hey, that's a first down. As I said, third and five. They're three for three now on third downs. First and 10. Wentz dropping back on first down. Looks over the middle of the field. Finds Melvin Gordon, who makes a man miss on one of the worst tackle attempts I have ever seen. He was all over the place. And boy, Carson Wentz using that angle route effectively, finding his halfback and getting it inside the 10 to the 8-yard line. A lot of cover two zones, but you're noticing the middle linebacker is either staying man or he's being dropped into a deep blue zone, definitely leaving the middle of the field wide open. First and goal for the Chargers. Two timeouts remaining as they just used their first one. It's going to be a handoff to Melvin Gordon over the left side. Who gets obliterated in the hole. Big hit by the Titans to bring down Melvin Gordon at the 7-yard line. Only going to pick up one, going to bring up a second and goal. The 27th and 28th ranked 
teams offensively inside the red zone are the Los Angeles Chargers and Tennessee Titans. And they're showing every bit of that inability to actually punch the ball into the end zone right now. And it's, for, for a fan right now, both of these teams, it's just really struggling to watch. Frustrating to watch, excuse me. Yeah, second and goal now. Shotgun formation for Wentz. Three wide receivers. Landry coming in motion on second down. Nine seconds remaining as Wentz drops back on second down. Waiting, waiting, and he's going to take a sack at the 13-yard line. That is the last thing you wanted to do there as the Chargers will be forced to use their final timeout. Boy, Wentz has got to get rid of that ball. But again, the play calling, I, I, you know it's probably going to be a cover two inside the five-yard line. Every single one of those routes gets absolutely covered by a cover two, and so there was just no chance of that play being successful. The kick is up. It is good. We go to halftime. 10-6 your score. Yeah, the problem with that play calling is they were actually looking for the post, and it's kind of a late developing post. It requires blocking to kind of hold up for you, and Wentz was staring at that the entire time, trying to get over top of the linebackers, hit the back of the end zone. Just didn't have enough time. Another thing, where are the screens? Where are the draws? Where are the throws to the flat quick to allow your receiver to turn up field and try to get you some yards? Everything seems to be trying to throw into the middle of the field and into the middle of the end zone for the Los Angeles Chargers on offense. they got to fix that going into half. Yeah, we come out at halftime. 10-6 your score. Tennessee going to get the ball to start the second half. And, boy, Bomber, it does feel like if Tennessee just finds a way to get their offense going and find the end zone again, this game might be out of reach. Well, try-hard guy in the chat is trying really hard right now. He says, Chargers can't get into the end zone. Uh, no, he said, Chargers I, I can't, it. Chargers can't, can't charge, charge into, into the end zone. Yeah, yeah I botched that one. It was real funny, try-hard. Bomber just messed that one up. Yeah, they I, I, off. I messed it up. Y'all, I'm going to take the L for that one. It's, you know what? It's okay. There's always the next time. Is a three-yard gain on first down for Bryant Vance. Going to bring up a second and seven. Wait, Bomber. I wasn't doing my radio voice. That's probably why. That was that was the problem. But we're talking yeah. about Gordon struggling today. The, uh, the Chargers have really contained Bryant Vance. Yeah, they have, uh, and that's that's a key to victory for the uh, Los Angeles Chargers is to stop Brian Vance. They've done it now. They're only down four. They haven't played well offensively or defensively, but they have stopped the running attack for the Tennessee Titans. Let's see if they can continue that trend here in the second half. Second and seven. It's going to be a handoff to the right side for Brian Vance. Oh, boy, he got caught up on his fullback. He'll be taken down to the 28-yard line. No gain on the play. It looked like if he had gotten around the fullback and actually gotten to the second level, Brian Vance might still be running instead, though. It's a disappointing no gain, and it's another third and seven. A chance for the Chargers to stop the Titans on this first drive in the third quarter. They're going to come out. Jameis Winston, he'll be in the shotgun. Four wide receivers, two to each side. That's the Titans' Scruggs on the right side. As he drops back, looks over to the out route. When in doubt, out route. Easy throw over. Whoa, 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 I used whoa. it. I used it. Oh I'm taking God. the title. I am Dr. Seuss. I Green eggs and ham something. I don't know. First and ten. Uh, nice throw to the outside there by uh, You know, James when Winston. I saw that out route developing, I thought this is going to be a great opportunity for me to use that again. It was it was a perfect buildup, and you just you stole my thunder. Yeah, I apologize. Your thunder was absolutely ripped away from you as Winston in the shotgun on first and 10, dropping back. Blitz picked up nicely. Throw over the top. Oh. Um, ah, that could have been a user pick right there. Uh, That was some, some you know, that looked like unisolated usering out there. Well, I, I think he just thought he was underneath it enough that he was going to be able to jump around and pick it, and the ball just sailed over his head. He stopped running, and uh, I, I don't know why Tennessee and James Winston decided to make that throw at that point because it just looked like the user was on top of it. He threw it anyways. The user didn't react, and they're moving the chains, and they're, they're headed into that infamous red zone. So I, I advise them now to try to score here while they're at the 26th before they take their 28th-ranked offense in the red zone uh, man, into the red in zone. Motion. Uh, over to the right side, putting three over on the right side, one on the left. Assuming Winston dropping back to pass, they're set up a screen. It's covered well. He's going to have to get rid of it. Looks to the corner out on the right side. It's caught oh, wow. toe tapping on the sidelines. What a job there by Jameis Winston. So many times we see quarterbacks lock into the slip screen. If it's not open, they're in trouble. Winston let that corner route develop and put it over the top to the tight end Scruggs. Interesting that he moved the pre snap, uh, a little zig route on the left side, moved it to the right side. Which kind of created just a little bit more time for Jameis Winston when that screen wasn't there. Just nice job right here keeping his head down the field and making the right throw. First and 10, Winston driving back, blitz coming, waiting, looks over the middle. Oh, it's almost picked, but no sorry, Bryant Vance. He catches it and gets into the end zone. What a throw by Jameis Winston. Oh, he just absolutely found Vance over the middle, and the Titans may have extended this out of the reach of an anemic Chargers offense. Yeah, that's wild right there. Jameis Winston really trusting his arm and his, and his arm strength 
Uh, at this point of, the, of, the, of his career, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, current Tennessee Titan quarterback, hasn't looked too great this season. That's his 17th passing touchdown on the season, but he still has uh, that big arm. He's 95 throw power right now, Jameis Winston, at 29 years old. Big shout out to Bobby33. Scott now following here on Twitch. Appreciate all of our followers. Appreciate all of our subscribers and everybody tuning into MBL Live Broadcast 226 here on the MBL Network. I am OSU. I'm hanging out with my man, the Commish Bomber. Don't forget, if you're tuning in for the first time, to go head over to our website, 365.maddenbombling.com. If you have an Xbox, apply for our EA Access Tournament. It's easy to apply. It's free to enter as Cunningham sacks Carson Wentz. Wait, how, how many... How many how much cash prizes? I mean, how much prizes are we giving out? What's the value over, of these prizes? Over $1,000. $1,000. Oh, wow. what, what if I win? What if I get first place? What do I get? You are going to get two prizes, actually. A signed okay. Saquon Barkley New York Giants helmet and a copy of the Madden 19 Hall of oh, wow. Fame edition. Uh, Bummer, I don't know if you know who was on the cover on that one. Um, it was this guy. I just want to say, hey, man, this is T.O., the cover athlete of the Madden 19 Hall of Fame edition. And you're watching the gold standard of the franchise mode, the MBL Network. Holla. Holla indeed to you, T. I can't say holla, can I, Bomber? That's not. I, I don't. I don't. I, I don't know. I, I mean, unless. I apologize. <laughs> that is a 2001. Maybe we can go back in time and, and bust that out. Holla. The the only Maybe holla. Can... The only holla I can pull off is Gwen Stefani's holla back girl. That's all I have. <laughs> it's the only thing I have. As a nice throw on second down, it's Carson Wentz finds who else but Hunter Henry over the middle, and now they have to convert this third and seven and avoid giving the ball back to the Tennessee Titans with the Titans up 11. Four wide receivers, two to each side for Carson Wentz. Melvin Gordon in the back light box. Let's see if they decide to try and run it here on third and seven or if they're going to let Wentz air it out. They're going to run a little draw play to Melvin Gordon Ooh. right up the middle. He's going to pick up the first down. Ooh. Easiest first down for Gordon. Bummer, you were begging for screens. You were begging for draws, and my gun might have listened to you there. Okay, so I, I saw him get to the line of scrimmage, and I'm doing my checks. At the same time, Wentz is doing his checks, and I say, man, that corner looks like he's coming off the edge. And I wasn't thinking a draw. I was thinking to use that against them, maybe have a seam, uh, you know, on that straight, same side as the corner comes off the slot corner. No, they draw it right up the middle as the linebackers drop back. Just a beautifully called play right there to pick up that third and seven. Bravo. Maybe maybe the we'll offensive get the corner. offense going on first and ten. Wentz dropping back to pass. Waiting, looks underneath, completes it to Landry. Just doesn't have the speed to get away from the defender, but picks up a good chunk. Cut it back to a second and three. Hey, while we got a second here in the third quarter, I want to give a big shout-out to our graphic sponsor, Web3KS.com. Uh, they do a ton of graphics for our entire network, including the overlays and graphics you see on all of our network shows. Uh, and, uh, all business over at Web3KS.com doing a great deal. If anybody you know needs graphics done, um, hit up Web3KS.com. Let them know MBL sent you. You'll get a 15% discount on your entire order. Web3KS.com, the leaders in affordable graphic design. Second and three for the LA Chargers. Three wide receivers, one tight end out there for Carson Wentz. Shot. Shotgun as he drops back on second and three. He's going to take the shot over the left side. Has a man over the top. And Mike Williams goes up for it and brings it down on the left side at the 13-yard line. Bomber, he had... Uh, two streak routes. It looked like on the right side, uh, he had a receiver going deep down the field. That was Keenan Allen, but he finds Mike Williams over the top, who's had so many big catches for the L.A. Chargers. Yeah, just bad defense over there. They pressed up Mike Williams, and he shrugged them off like a little puppy. Just nowhere to go for the defender, and it was just a wide open, easy pitch and catch for the Chargers. First and 10, and it's going to be a handoff to Melvin Gordon over the right side. It's blocked well. Gordon's got some room. Gordon needs to get to the end zone. Big MG2K into the end zone. He hits the pylon. That's the killer instinct we've been looking for from the only 2,000-yard rusher in NBL history. Melvin Gordon gets this back to a one-score game. What a phenomenal run right there. Just the patience and the angles that Melvin Gordon took. I said, oh, turn it up field, turn it up field. He continues to go outside because he knows if you try to touch Melvin Gordon, he's still falling forward, and he used his power. His agility and his athleticism still at 30 years young finds the edge and, and gets to it and scores for the Los Angeles Chargers. And guess what? We got ourselves a ball game here, broadcast number 226. About 29 to go in the third quarter. Tennessee getting the ball back. It's going to be up to the Chargers' pass defense, Sonny. The, the uh, Chargers. I'm not Sonny. I don't. It's going to be up to the Chargers' pass <laughs> defense to stop Sonny, sir. Oh, yeah. I, I knew you were going to. I knew you were going to play it off that way. I would have done the same. Hey, hey, I appreciate that. I, I would have done it the same way. But hey. if I ever hear Sonny and I feel like you're talking to me, you I'm said you said it. you were gonna leave, so go away. Get out of here. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, I'll miss you. First and ten. Three wide receivers out there for Jameis Winston. So he hands off to Brian Vance over the right side, who runs right into one of those big fellows on the line. And well, that that uh that isn't that isn't gonna go as, as he had hoped. Loss of one on the play. Uh, Mothman, is there a link to the graphics site? Uh, Deck dog, you can put it in there. Web3ks.com. Web3ks.com. 
Shout out to all business over at web3kiss.com. JY, you can't do it. JY, settle down. You're not a mod. No links. Nightbot got you. Second 11. Oh, they're running a little cross screen. Oh, Malik McDowell dropped a pick six. Oh, McDowell had it jump the entire way. Winston, for some reason, threw it, but McDowell's big old mitts couldn't bring down the easy pick six. Oh, we're going to be looking back at that one of the Chargers end up losing this game. That was a touchdown the entire way. Timbo in the chat. That was it. Absolutely. Uh, Serp in the chat. Get it. That was unbelievably the easiest pick you could possibly get. Even old OSU could have found a way to pull down that pick. Instead, it's third and 11. Let's see if the Titans can take advantage of some new life. Empty backfield for Jameis Winston. Man going in motion over to the right side. Let's see if this is the screen or the verts. It's a pump fake. It's the verts. He's thrown over the top. It's a bad throw, though. Thrown into quadruple coverage. The Titans offense falling apart right now. And now it's going to be a punt back to the Chargers with a little bit of momentum after Gordon was able to find the end zone. Uh, it, it, now the Chargers are going to have to do it again. They need a touchdown to go back on top. But what has happened with Jameis Winston and the offense of the Tennessee Titans? Just some horrible, horrible reads on that one. Back-to-back -back throws that shouldn't have been made. Uh, and now it's going to be a punt back to the Chargers. Maybe the Chargers can use a little momentum. They get gifted a couple big plays. Could have been turnovers instead. They still hold them to a punt, and Richardson can take this back from the 24-yard line. Shakes off one man. He's got some room on the right side, up past the 30. Got to cut up the field. 35-40. Stop and go. Oh, man, he made so many Titans look silly on that one. All the way up to the 42-yard line. What a run there by Richardson to get them into great field position with 48 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Uh, let's see what's going on in the chat uh, as we have... A lot of people talking right now. Appreciate everybody tuning into MBL Live. We got a great game on tap, folks. First and 10. I formation. That one going at the top of that eye. It looks like they set up a little screen pass. They've been begging for it. And Gordon gets the screen. And he has a, a nice run there. But he puts the pick skin on the ground. And it's picked up by the Titans. Oh, Gordon giveth. Gordon taketh away. The fumble bug comes out. And Melvin Gordon puts that one on the, on the turf. As number one draft pick, just subscribe with Twitch Prime. Appreciate the sub. You'll be entered into all of our MBL giveaways. We'll be giving away a bunch of stuff. Not only $1,000 worth of prizes to tournament participants, but we'll be doing some sub-only giveaways during our uh, our MBL tournament. 64 players for that Saquon Barkley helmet. First and 10 for the Tennessee Titans with great field positions. A play-action pass. Oh, he's looking over the middle. It's caught. And the Titans with new life down to the 17-yard line. Jameis Winston, a beautiful read there. And just what it looked like, the Chargers might be able to take control. The Chargers might be able to get back on top, get a lead, and walk away with this one. Melvin Gordon, usually sure Hannah puts the pigskin on the ground. Big, 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 big mistake by the only 2,000-yard rusher in NBL history. And now, 17 yards away for Jameis Winston in the offense. Three wide receivers, he drops back to pass. Blitz coming, it's not picked up, so he dumps it off to Brian Vance on the right side, who's all sorts of open. Tries to make a move. Joey Bosa dropped back in coverage. He's able to make the tackle at the five-yard line. But they'll pick up another first down on the play. First and goal from the five. Boy, oh boy. Bomber, it looked like the Chargers were in perfect position. And then Melvin Gordon puts it on the ground. What a big turnover. Yeah, we see this often with Melvin Gordon fumbling uh, in, in key situations in the third, the second quarter. But he usually comes back strong in the fourth quarter. So I want to count out the Los Angeles Chargers just yet. Now we need their defense to hold this uh, offense to three real quick. But I think Melvin Gordon is going to be fired up there on that sideline. Well, we got one quarter to settle this one. And boy, if the Chargers defense can hold them inside the five-yard line, that would be huge momentum for the offense. But if Tennessee's able to score, it's going to be tough. We'll see if the Chargers are going to be able to come back at all. See what the defense can do as it is Jameis Winston under center. He's going to hand it to Brian Vance right up the middle. Sanford in on the tackle. He'll get two on the play to three-yard line. Boy, that looked dangerous, but the blitz got there just in time. Second and goal. Bomber, do the Titans even risk throwing it here inside the five? I don't know. I wouldn't. I, I mean, I take the three, and I just say, hey, I trust my defense. All right, in the chat we, we got right now, Colonel Sanders says he's about to do a, a subscriber giveaway. Slam subscriber. Oh, here we go. This this might be big. Hand off to uh, Brian Vance. Uh, yeah, nothing doing there. Yeah, he's going with the old the old slam scriber. Not quite. It doesn't flow off the tongue quite as well as gub scriber, but uh, when you're gifting subs, I'll let you call it whatever you want. <laughs> it really it really doesn't the gub scriber came off perfectly our, our main man gub uh in the nbl i think he gave away three or four but colonel sanders is at another level yeah i think he's at five six now gifted already hey colonel sanders i don't know how you do this but uh you might want to look at mothman he's been active in the chat 
New guy here on the NBL Network. Very complimentary as it's going to be handed off to Bryant Vance, and he's going to walk in the end zone. Boy, how do the Chargers lose the edge so much there on, on third down? You know, you know it's probably going to be Bryant Vance getting the carry on third down, and the Chargers defense don't seal the edge at all for the speedy running back, and it's back to an 11-point lead. Right there, you just noticed something with Brian Vance. Those first two plays, they were almost adamant on running the ball up the middle. It was halfback dive, and then another play that ended up just coming right up the center, and it just kind of sucked the defense in for that third down. So while they ran that power, he just took the power, ran it outside off the edge, and just walks into the end zone. Just beautifully done there for the Tennessee Titans. A struggling team inside the red zone. But they made a nice little strive there, a drive there to get inside and, and score the touchdown and put themselves back up 11. Hey. So applause and kudos to them. And big shout out to Colonel Sanders 94, gifting that tier one sub to Mothman 491. Wayne Poe, too. What is this? Uh, well, welcome to the MBL Network. We are a connected franchise over on the Xbox One. This is week 10 action between the Chargers and the Titans. I'm OSU. I'm hanging out with my man, the commissioner himself, Bomber. Broadcast 226 here on the MBL Network. First and 10. It's a handoff to Melvin Gordon over the left side. He's got some room on the counter play. Spin move, but Gordon just doesn't have that ability, that agility, Bomber. That used to be an easy play for Gordon. Spin back to the inside and get off to the races. Instead, the Tennessee Titans able to bring him down after a seven-yard gain. Yeah, it was the spin cycle for uh, Melvin Gordon for so many years, especially when he hit MG2K, went for 2,000 yards. That was NBL season 29, and now he's 30 years old. I say 30 years young, but... During this fourth quarter and late third quarter, he's kind of looking 30 years old at this point. Melvin Gordon, he's ex exceeded expectations at 30 years old, but still uh -oh. not what uh -oh. we've expected before. Oh, here it comes. Oh, here comes the PAFK quick. Oh, he aborts the play action, throws it to the wheel. The user is all over the place. <laughs> he gets out of the 48-yard line. Put that on the Sonny Weaver highlight reel for that user skill. Yeah, let's let's talk. Draco, uh, Serp. Clip that for me, please. A poor user play by Sonny Weaver, the underachiever, a.k.a. Mr. 10-6. and six. Not looking 10-6 and six this season, but he is ahead right now. He's 3-5. and five. He's pretty much got to run the table the rest of the season, but Chargers are still in this game. Uh, Gordon right up the middle. Lots of room on first and 10. He'll pick up the first down. Wayne Poe, two questions. You announce while you're playing. No, we, we the commentators, are not playing. This is happening live. One of our other, um, yeah, one of our other members, they are Twitch streaming this. We are calling the game over the top of that. Melvin Gordon isn't 30. He is in our league. We are, this is season number seven of the Madden 18 cycle. As Brawler says, he, uh, he clipped that bad boy. Um, we can put that on the, uh, I'll use that on Highly Debatable, Brawler. Don't worry. Uh, first and 10. <laughs> it's Carson Wentz dropping back to pass. Waiting, waiting. Lots of time. Waits for the in route. He finds Mike Williams with another big catch. Oh, and just when it looked like the Chargers offense was dead, Carson Wentz has been throwing dots all over the field. And they're inside the 20 yard line up to the 17. Yeah, a lot of people right now are probably saying 11 points. So even if they score, it's a four-point game, three minutes left. But that pressure will eat away at the Tennessee Titans. Trust me, you could get a quick three and out. And in the NBL, you're not allowed to milk clock till under two minutes left in the game. Plenty so if you, can see, if you can see the Chargers get into the end zone here at about the three-minute mark, there's an opportunity to get a quick three and out and get the ball back for, for the Los Angeles Chargers. Wentz drops back, quick throw over the middle. He finds Melvin Gordon, who... Possession catches it at the 11-yard line. That wasn't pretty, but he, he picks up six. As, uh, that was a little insta-shed right on the interior as Carson Wentz was, uh, well, he was seeing the Tennessee Titans about to bring him down for a sack. Nice job getting rid of that ball. Yeah, I, I think Melvin Gordon anticipated contact there when there was none there, and if there was, he was usered by Sonny, which means he'd find a way just to kind of just get himself out of the play. Now second and four, 11-point lead for the Titans, but the Chargers driving here, 3.15 to go. Wentz, quick three-step drop, waiting, waiting. Oh, B's all sorts of open. B's in the end zone, and it's a touchdown, and Jarvis Landry comes all the way across the field. The offensive line protected long enough, and uh, that was a, that was an interesting celebration from Jarvis Landry. He can do whatever he wants. He finds the end zone to cut this back to a one-score lead. Speaking of celebrations. And Sonny Weaver's in the chat talking mid-game. Bomber, what is one of my biggest pet peeves? Uh, uh, Sonny Weaver getting in the game. He, he, uh, OSU says this is disrespectful. Uh, he likes you to focus on the game and be respectful to your opponent and not jump in there. But Sonny's trying to trying to defend his name. He's listening to the broadcast as he goes. Uh, Two-point conversion here. Waiting, waiting. Wentz throws it into the end zone. Oh, Hunter Henry looking like a center there. Boxing oh, out oh, the defender gosh. and using his big frame to bring down the two-point conversion. That is huge to get this back to a three-point lead. Sonny says he wasn't supposed to be on that cornerback, but during the time where the guy was moving, that was Sonny completely moving the entire time. No. And if he didn't recognize what that play was at that point, put down the controller. Then, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> put it down. Which, which, which maybe he did. 
Uh, but then he wiggled around so much, you can't even give him that credit. Uh, 24 He's, he's going back to Wildcat right now, folks. That's the second Wildcat of the game. That's the max amount of Wildcats you can run. Can't run any more than that. Let's see uh, if this one is more successful than the first time when they ran out of the monster formation. First and 10. Shotgun formation. Wildcat formation. Bryant Vance taking the snap. Trying to use the fake hike. Thinking. Uh, there we go. There's the snap. Uh, Vance is going to keep it on the outside. It's got a little bit of room, but uh, the Chargers defense. Uh, Bomber, what I've been most impressed about, about this Chargers defense, the tackling has been uh, incredibly uh, conservative. We haven't seen a whole lot of missed tackles on the side of the LA Chargers. Yeah, phenomenal open field tackling for the Chargers. They've always been that. They're, they're fundamentally disciplined. Uh, they got a bunch of Tim Duncans on defense, and they just use their footwork and just their overall fundamentals to square you up in the open field, and then they don't get too risky. That's one thing you don't see. You don't see them just really just trying to stretch out for tackles. They really keep everything inside of themselves and keep the offensive player in front of them. James Winston dropping back on second and six. Dangerous throw into coverage, and it is an incomplete pass. Z-Star and Motor in the chat saying that Gubb will get a stop here. Decadog pointing out Bryant Vance. We're talking about Gordon's having a disappointing game. Bryant Vance, 12 carries, 18 yards. Bomber, this was a guy yeah. This was a guy who Sonny on Highly Debatable said that he would have more yards than Leonard Fournette at the end of the year. Oh, uh, I mean, you got to have confidence in your own players. Let's see what they can do here on this third and six. Biggest play of the game. Can they get a stop? Looks over the middle of the field. Boy, you could see that it was going to be a seam route the entire way. Uh, and, and Winston put a throw on the dot but at the end of the day boy that's got to be a that defensive call is absolutely horrible in that situation yeah running the, the the show too just they showed two and they just didn't have enough quickness at safety to kind of get their guys and their safeties where they needed to be so they showed two and they just tried to bait them but it just didn't work hand off to brian vance over the left side he's gonna fight forward driving those lights picking up three on the play that should take us down to the two minute warning still both teams have three timeouts but yeah, I, Bomber, I mean, yes, the team is getting older. Yes, the Chargers haven't played maybe as well as they could in, in some of these closer games. They're playing a tough schedule this year. But at the end of the day, uh, if there's one glaring, glaring problem with the Chargers team, the play calling on both sides of the ball has been questionable. But maybe that's just me. I don't know. Second and seven uh, for the uh, Tennessee Titans. They need a first down to probably put this one away. Uh, and the uh, Chargers need to stop badly. They're going to have to start using timeouts. Five wide receivers here for Jameis Winston. Let's see uh, if, if this is a quick pass, maybe a screen. We've seen a lot of motion out of this set. Second and seven. Yep, it's going to be a pass. Quick throw over the middle, and Jameis Winston uh, put put a little bit on that mustard right on that ball right there. Threw it over the middle. Probably lucky that was overthrown as it looks like uh, Gubb on the use ring uh, was, was ready to jump that. Now a third and seven. What do you do if you're the Titans here, folks? Do you throw the ball? Do you try to pick up the first down? Do you run it with Bryant Vance? They're the 41. It's a 58-yard field goal, so they're able to pick up three or four. Maybe they don't get the first down. They'll at least put themselves in field goal position. Vance not on the field. Three wide receivers over to the left side. One tight end on the right. That is Scrubs. One running back to the right of James Winston. The shotgun. Minute 58 to go. All three timeouts left, but a huge play here is now they're switching it up. Putting two in the backfield, three wide receivers, two over to the right, one to the left side. Scruggs, the, the tight end in the backfield with Jameis Winston. Third and seven, Winston dropping back to pass. Blitz coming up the middle, it's picked up well, and Winston's got some room on the right side, and he's going to take off. He is going to go out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Big play there, picking up the first down. Nice shot by the defense to get Winston out of bounds, but no contain on the outside. And again, we're looking at another play, Bomber. We're looking at another play. It's third and seven. You know the Titans are probably going to run the ball, but they may throw it as well. You run that big three-sting press blitz that only leaves five back. That just sets you up to get beat. Yeah, they wanted the pressure to get there, and the pressure just got picked up. Where was the edge heat? The cornerback in the slot supposed to come off the edge. He just never, ever got there. But they still have three timeouts, and if they hold them to three here, they can still score a touchdown and steal this game little inside zone for Bryant Vance. He's going to fall forward to the 20-yard line. And it's a bad time for the Chargers defense to give up a nine-and-a-half-yard gain. Going to bring up a second and inches. Yeah, they're going to have to let the clock run on this one. Don't even worry about burning the timeout. Let them burn the 40 seconds off this clock because it's going to be tough to stop him on second and inches here. Let them get it. Do you run commit here? One of the... oh, oh, I think I, I might I, on I second and inches. Yeah. Maybe you can get it to a third and three and then burn a timeout and hope to get it back. Because even if you give up three here, you're still okay if you're the Chargers. Second and inches from the 20-yard line. 
It is indeed going to be handed off to Bryant Vance, who air trucks his way through absolutely nobody. There wasn't even anybody near uh, near Bryant Vance. There's an injury on the play. It's going to force the Chargers to use one of those timeouts with a minute 14 to go. And now the Chargers are in trouble. First and 10. Got to admit, they're gonna, you got to expect them to be going for the strip, going for the big hit here. Hand off to Bryant Vance over the left side. He'll be taking down the 17-yard line. Big tackle. will use their second timeout as Stanford. Uh, the strong safety. Very talented strong safety in L.A. out for the game. Yeah, that, that's a tough uh, tackle right there on, on Brian Vance because when he gets into space, he's just very tough. He keeps his feet moving, keeps him chopping. He's very elusive, and that's what makes him so dynamic. Watch the run to the right side here. Off the no, edge. they're throwing it. Oh, James Winston's throwing it. Throws it over the middle. Finds the fullback who gets obliterated at the one-yard line. Boy, I don't oh. – don't, don't, don't hit him at the one. Let him go. Okay, well, that's, that's going to be the ball game, right? I mean, it's three knees and we're done. Yeah. Two knees. So maybe three. You need three, depending on the up. There's the two. Nice clock. neck roll there by the fullback. Uh, He's got Chargers the big just couldn't neck. get it done. Uh, it just defense couldn't come up with a big enough stop. Especially uh, when it comes and down. And the to defense played great all game. Boy, the Chargers offense had so many opportunities, uh, especially inside the red zone. The big difference is they had to settle for two field goals inside the ten yard line. If you can't score touchdowns inside the ten bomber, you're not going to win many games, and the Chargers are going to fall even farther. Uh, if this is just not the same team we've seen in years past. They still have a chance to make the playoffs in the AFC, but they probably, this was, this probably, they probably needed to win out, Bomber. That was the answer, and, and they just don't have enough, and the Titans did just enough today to get a big win. Yeah, they did, and they, they keep their season hopes alive. They're going to improve to 4-5 and five as the as the Chargers are going to fall to 3-6 and six on the season. A team that got off to an 0-3 start, kind of battled their way back to Los Angeles Chargers, that being, and then just all of a sudden, just are not the same team that we're used to accustomed to seeing and, and right now at, at three and six it's going to be it's going to take a miraculous finish they're going to have to finish 10 and 6 to even have a shot at the playoffs right now while the titans still have a long road ahead of them and winning the division seems very you know it seems murky right now if you're a titans fan maybe you can convince yourself into believing that but man you know th this was a big win this was a must win for both teams and the titans come away with the big w Time now to take our make our player of the game selection for NBA Live Broadcast 226. Uh, and Bomber, uh, for me, um, Bryant Vance, non-existent in this game. So the guy who I go to had a big game. Jameis Winston threw for over yeah. 300 yards, uh, and he threw two touchdowns. Made some big plays when he needed. He's not a guy who we usually call out because he typically is a little wild with the throw, throws a lot of picks. But today he was solid in the backfield and was able to get just enough done for the Titans to come out with a victory. Jameis Winston, not to mention his ability to run uh, in the pocket or scramble away from the blitz. You got to roll blitz on the left side. He hikes the ball. He sees it. He starts drifting to the right. Then he takes off, picks up a big first down against the three, uh, what was it, the odd blitz, three, three, five odd blitz. Yeah, I mean, that three this guy. press blitz. Yeah, yeah, the busting. This guy is a phenomenal athlete with a strong arm, and tonight he showed every bit of that athleticism, made some questionable throws, but he made the right plays at the right time for the Tennessee Titans, and that was enough for me today. NBA Live broadcast number 226. We got to go with starting quarterback for the Tennessee Titans, Jameis Winston. Oh, famous Jameis going to be your player of the game. You can check out all of our player of the game selections on our website, 365 dot madden bomber league and this is actually james winston's third team that he's played on nbl live with I'm, i forgot That's about true. the cleveland yeah. browns cleveland browns stint with the browns he had a he had a pretty good uh stint with the browns and then they decided they were going to draft joey watson they let him go he came inside with the tennessee titans so this is third team this cycle uh it's it's pretty crazy to see a quarterback with 95 throw power and having all those tools bounce around th to three teams in seven eight yeah. seasons through free agency as we don't allow players over 76 to get traded Oh man, it's just it's just kind of a kind of an up and down thing there for James Winston, but he, he looked good tonight, man. A programming note for everybody out there. We will not have an MBL live, an MBL live broadcast like this until next week, looking like Tuesday. Uh, but we will have bonus coverage throughout the end of the week. So be sure to hit that follow button so you know every time bonus coverage goes live. Uh, if you haven't tuned into bonus coverage, Bomber uh, will be on the call. Banana's doing the producing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, you get to see some broadcasts you wouldn't see on MBL Live. A little more laid back, but uh, it's a ton of broadcast. So be sure to check out bonus coverage in on this weekend and the end of this week. And of course, head over to our website, 365.madamarmalink.com. Sign up for our EA Access Tournament. All proceeds go into Operation Homefront. We've already raised almost $1,200, uh, over $1,200 actually, for the tournament. And we're still a month away. Be sure you apply. First place gets that Saquon Barkley helmet. So many prizes were given away and it's completely free to enter. 
For my co-host Bomber, I am OSU. We appreciate you tuning into MBL Live Broadcast 226. Your final score, the Tennessee Titans just eke out the victory over the Los Angeles Chargers 24-21. We will see you next time. Bonus coverage all week and next week for another edition of MBL Live.